Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashrada Sarun um, from Campbell Collaboration, and I will be talking very briefly about evidence mapping and uh, using an example of an evidence and gap map that we did on people with disabilities. And I'll show you how we tried to include equity aspects in our searches and some of the findings that we got related to equity focused areas. So uh, this is basically a snapshot of the disability evidence and gap map that we did at Gamble Collaboration. Uh, this map basically included uh, impact evaluations and systematic reviews. And uh, we identified around 166 uh, studies in total, out of which 59 are systematic reviews and 107 are impact evaluation. This map is now completed and we will be uh, getting publishing the report very soon. It is in the pipeline currently, so you will have the access to this. Uh, before I go on, of course, I would like to very briefly uh, mention a bit about what exactly is evidence mapping and what is the basic methodology that we used to get to this evidence uh, gap map on people with disabilities. So very briefly, uh, evidence and gap map, uh, they are basically systematic presentation uh, of all the available relevant evidence for a particular sector or a subsector. In a very layman language, if I have to tell you, it's evidence and gap map. They are typically in the form of a matrix of rows and out, rows and columns, where your rows usually forms the interventions and your columns are your outcomes. So if you see the two maps, uh, you know, here, the, the first map is by an organization called International Initiative for Impact Evaluation. And the second map is by Campbell Collaboration. So a typical map, as I mentioned, they are usually in the form of rows and columns, like your rows are your interventions and your columns are your outcomes. The different bubbles that you see here on the map uh, basically corresponds to the type of evidence it is. So for example, uh, a typical map, in a typical map, we usually quality rate the systematic reviews and they're usually in the form of a traffic light color signal. So for example, if you see a green colored bubble, that means it is of high quality. If you see an orange colored bubble, that means it's of medium quality. And if you see a red colored bubble, that means it's of low quality. And now the question is, how are we rating the quality of these studies? So they are done using a standardized checklist, like for disability evidence and gap map, we used AMSTAR 2 which is a 16 point checklist and which assess the methodological quality of how the systematic reviews are conducted. But for this evidence and gap map, we also quality rated the primary studies or the impact evaluations and impact evaluations were quality rated using modified risk of bias tool. And we piloted this tool on close to 30 studies and then a lot of expert consultation were done and it was validated. Only then we applied it on to rest of the studies. So what do you actually see in an evidence and gap map? So typically an evidence and gap map will tell you where exactly you have good amount of evidence. Like you can see uh, this particular area, which I have highlighted in blue color. There sh it shows number of bubbles. So it tells you there's good amount of evidence out there. And the area which I've highlighted in red color here, we do not see any bubbles. It tells you that you do not have much evidence in that area. So the primary purpose that we do evidence and gap map is to highlight the areas where we have high quality studies so that we that those systematic reviews can be used for making policy decisions. Whereas it also highlights the area where you do not have any high quality systematic reviews so that you know it helps us identify areas and identify the weaknesses in conducting those systematic reviews also key thing is it also helps us identify areas which do not have impact evaluations or which do not have areas of systematic review if you do not have impact evaluations as well and you see an area which i have highlighted here like this these are called as absolute gaps so this is where we need to do more implementation research. Important point for an EGM is that 
the main purpose for an evidence and gap map is to show the evidence and tell us how much evidence is out there but it does not tell us you know what the evidence says also i kept on saying evidence throughout my presentation so far so this evidence can either be global or for a particular region it can cover different type of evidence and it can include primary studies or systematic reviews again one of the important points for an evidence and gap map is they follow the same systematic review methodology like systematic reviews so they are as comprehensive and as systematic as systematic review but of course they are broader than systematic reviews so like any other systematic review they follow pre specified protocol they have to have a systematic search strategy they have clear inclusion and exclusion criteria and they systematically report all the eligible studies now for this particular presentation i will be focusing more on the systematic search strategy that included aspects of equity in it but before that i want to take you to the framework as i mentioned an egm is typically is in the form of a framework and that framework is the primary dimension of an evidence and gap map so primary dimension is basically formed by rows and columns as i mentioned earlier but an evidence and gap map they also have some secondary dimensions in the form of filters so these secondary dimensions are study designs data publication country region and population subgroup now again for this presentation i'll focus a bit more on population subgroup because as you already know that disability in itself is an equity issue where you know a lot of research is ongoing but within uh, you know trying when we talk about welfare of people with disabilities there are certain subgroups that might be more vulnerable and require you know increased attention in terms of research so the question is where how do we exactly get to that framework where do we find that intervention and outcome when we are talking about an evidence and gap map so there are different ways either you have an existing framework which commands consensus and you can use it if you do not have an existing framework you have to go back and read the key uh, global strategy documents if you don't have that then you go and identify key strategy documents from your funder if that is also not available then we have to go back and look at different project documents and identify the key objectives related to your topic if that is also not available then we have to go back and do a lot of funder and stakeholder consultations but for disability evidence and gap map we had an existing framework that we used and that is called as community based rehabilitation matrix so we use this framework for both the interventions and outcome this uh, cbr matrix comprises of five of five key strategies that includes health education livelihood social and empowerment so it cover all the key aspects for the welfare of people with disabilities so we use this framework since it is universally used to devise the framework that i showed you earlier now since our interventions and outcome were decided for our picos the main thing was talking about the population so of course our egm included people with disabilities but we also included their families so any study that talked about your welfare of people with disabilities and the families we included them also they are traditionally underrepresented groups that are relevant with respect to disabilities because uh, these traditionally underrepresented group they might be more vulnerable in the face of disability and it is noted that they are may also relate to high prevalence of disability so we included them into our egm as well as a population subgroup and that includes vulnerable children especially children care we included conflict affected regions we included migrants we included uh, refugees ethnic minority group as well as women Now the question was: Did our search included equity focus, or did our search had an equity focus for these studies to be captured into our map? So we did try to make our search sensitive, and we did try to make it equity focused search. 
There are aspects that we might have missed when we applied a search strategy, but we did include terms like social, socioeconomic, or exclusion, inclusion, or for disadvantaged population, we try to include terms like disadvantage or hierarchy or determinants. Apart from that, we also include a term specifically related to vulnerable population, socioeconomic factors, or poverty. We also included different variants of equity, inequity, inequality, disparity, and inequality. So as a result of this, uh, we did identify a few studies that had equity focus, but majority of studies that we were able to identify, they simply disaggregated their results by gender or some of the study they disaggregated by result and using ethnic minorities, but we did not find many studies that talk specifically about, you know, women with disabilities or vulnerable children or, you know, conflict affected regions. So we we did identify we did, we did as a findings identify that they are there is, you know, less studies that are being talked about, you know, specifically related to these populations. And there is a need to generate more evidence and have studies specifically focusing on these aspects so as a conclusion the va we do feel that the value of additional impact evaluation in this area will increase if they use gender responsive and equity focused mixed methods to better understand for whom these intervention works and how that's all that i have to say for this presentation thank you so much and if you have any questions or uh, I would be very happy to answer all your questions if you have. Thank you.